Hey everyone, Joe here at Machining with Joe and today I'm here to talk to you about my mini lathe and all the upgrades I've done on it since owning it. So I do have individual videos on the majority of the things I'm going to show you in today's video but I just wanted to basically summarise that all together and give you 10 upgrades you must do on a mini lathe. Not to say if you don't do these you won't be able to do any machining but doing these upgrades is going to make your experience on a mini lathe that much better. So stay tuned guys, hopefully you're going to enjoy this video. But for now, let's head over and have a look at a mini lathe. WM180 and I refer to this normally as a mini lathe. So I find online the term mini lathe is thrown around quite a lot and there's no real exact definition of what size a mini lathe is. But for the majority of lathes anything that you can sit on top of your bench is normally classed as a mini lathe. So today we're going to walk through the 10 upgrades that I've done on this Walco WM180 and how I think they benefit this to make it a better lathe just for general use. To start with then, let's take a look at the main controls that you use on your lathe and how you can make them feel better. The majority of the work that you're going to be doing on your lathe then is going to be done by these two hand wheels here. One for your carriage and one for your cross slide. And when originally I bought this lathe, it didn't come with these brass handles, it actually came with these little handles. So in comparison, they're the same sort of length, but they're probably about half the diameter. And because of that, the feel that you get off these just doesn't feel that nice. So as a first good little project, what you can do is upgrade those handles to these brass ones that I've got fitted here. Not to say they have to be made out of brass. You could make these out of any material you chose. I just went with brass because I liked the feel of these. This makes a really great first project on the lathe. So if you haven't yet already done a project on your lathe, I'd highly consider making some brass handles just to upgrade the feel of it and get used to cutting things like tapers, nails, putting nice chamfers on it. So the first upgrade on my list today is going to be a set of brass handles. Moving swiftly on from these brass handles then, let's look up to the business end. Let's go to the quick change tool post. Now a quick change tool post is by no means a necessity on a mini lathe. It will just make using your lathe a lot more convenient when swapping out tools. So what is a quick change tool post? Well basically it's a tool post that you can quickly change your tool on and swap it out for something else. So when you buy your mini lathe you're probably going to get it with like a four way tool post that you've got to screw each tool in before using it. Well. With the use of a quick change tool post, it makes just changing tools a lot easier and more convenient. So for me, changing over to one of these as soon as I could was really one of my high priority jobs. On this Walco WM180, finding a tool post that fit wasn't as easy as I've just made out though, because originally on these lathes, you also have a compound rest on here, and that compound rest has an 18mm register in it, which has to sit under your tool post. So to find a tool post with an 18 mil recessed hole in it was quite difficult, but with a bit of jiggery pokery, I managed to get one on there. But I imagine you're asking, where's your compound rest now? Because obviously this solid block here isn't a compound rest, and you'll be right in thinking that. So the main source of rigidity loss on one of these mini lathes is your compound rest that sits here, the majority of the time you won't ever use it and the few times that you will will be for, for cutting tapers and relieving tool pressure when screw cutting. So because of that I decided to machine this flat block which acts as almost like a spacer to sit under my quick change tool post and just allow me 
use of the tool post without losing any rigidity. So number three upgrade on the list will definitely be having a solid riser to space the gap between the top slide and your quick change tool post. I cannot stress enough the difference this has made when turning down parts on the lathe. The rigidity increase is immense. So I would definitely consider doing one of them if you haven't already. And to be honest, it's quite a nice little project. To try get this as flat as you can, it's quite satisfying to see the tolerances you can get when using other machines in your shop. You can make one of these on your lathe if you need to, but having a mill is a lot easier for doing this. Right, with the tool post covered and the riser block covered, let's move on to upgrade number four on the list. So this next upgrade isn't something I use that often, but when I do use it, it increases the longevity lifespan of my lathe considerably. So it is a ways cover. So how this works, I've got magnets on both ends so I can quickly change this out and use it in and around processes. It just clips onto the carriage down here and connects down to this end here. And just like that, you've got yourself a ways cover fairly quick. So I don't find myself using this very often, like I've just said, but the main times I use it is when I've got a long piece of work in my chuck and I'm just trying to improve the surface finish of it, but not really take off any material. So I might be there cleaning up with some sandpaper and just to stop any of that abrasive material going onto the bed, I've got myself a little bit more protection there with this cover. So that's a really quick and easy upgrade you can do just to increase the longevity of your lathe and keep it operating at its best performance. And while we're on the subject of protection, I've been after for a long time a cover to go over my lead screw. So if any of you guys out there know where I can source one or possibly some of you out there have got a 3D printer and could make me one up, by all means I'll happily pay for it. I just don't really want to fork out for a 3D printer just to machine a cover for my lead screw. So there's a lot of telescopic ones I've seen online. I just can't seem to find any that I can buy for this lathe. So if any of you subscribers can help me out, I'll be much appreciated about that. The next two upgrades, again, are really basic upgrades, but they're going to make your time using the lathe a lot more enjoyable and in fact increase rigidity and accuracy of parts. So first of all, when you get one of these lathes, whether it be a WM180, any other mini lathe on the market, the majority of the time they don't come with a lock to lock your carriage. Sometimes you might have an Allen key bolt in here like I did to lock it, but it just makes using it really inconvenient because every time you're reaching for an Allen key. So a good little upgrade to do is machine yourself your own little lock with a handle so you don't have to use any other tools to lock your carriage. So by doing this, when you're doing facing passes, you're going to be locking it all the time because it's really easy to do and that will give you a much better surface finish and accuracy on your facing passes. So making one of these, again, is another little good project you can do on the lathe but it's also going to help you out in the long run. The next upgrade I've done is something I've only just done recently and I've been meaning to do it for a long time and it's adding another two gib screws onto your cross slide here. So when I bought this lathe, it only came with three gib screws on the top slide, which is sufficient enough for most work. But I found myself, when doing parting off, I get a lot of chatter on this lathe. So trying to increase rigidity was really important for me. So by adding these two extra gibs, it just makes the lathe a lot more rigid. I'm not gonna say it's as, as rigid as getting rid of your compound rest, but it does help the fact. So by adding an extra two gib screws is a really good little upgrade to do and doesn't actually take that much time if you've got yourself a pillar drill or a mill. So the next two upgrades are something that I never thought were gonna really be that important, but it actually turns out I use these on a daily basis when in here working on the lathe and nowadays I wouldn't be without them. And that's the introduction of a DRO. So a DRO or a digital readout is something that basically keeps track of your X and Y position when operating a lathe. And I've got to admit, 
I went a few months without having one of these and I got by but as soon as I hit that box and clicked pay now and got this installed on my lathe I've never looked back. Using a DRO is just so handy because you can zero your positions, it's really accurate, you don't ever lose track of where you are because it's all displayed digitally so you're not counting the dials on your hand wheel. It just makes life so much easier. So if you haven't got a DRO, this is one of the few things that I'm going to say you really should get. It just makes life, like I've just said, a lot easier. If like me, you've got a lathe that's come from a branded company with a good reputation, chances are they're going to be able to source a DRO for you. If you've imported your lathe from China and there's not really much after sales there, I imagine there is universal kits out there that you can fit to your lathe. So do a little bit of research before buying one just to make sure it's going to be right for you and buy it. Because like I've just said, I wouldn't be without my DRO now. And on the topic of DRO, I've also fitted, as another little upgrade, a DRO on my tailstock. So the main reason I've fitted this is when drilling holes, I can, to a good accuracy now, determine how deep that hole's going to be. Again, the DRO is really just an addition. It just makes life easier. I could, just like I could on the lathe, on the tailstock, I could count the hand wheels and work out how deep I'm going, but I've got to count for things like backlash and also the fact that I'm going to remember how many times I've gone round. But by adding a DRO onto your tailstock, it's just a really quick and easy reference if you want to do a sort of not really accurate hole, but let's put it in perspective. Say you were drilling a 20 millimeter hole. Doesn't matter if you go to 21 mil, 22 mil, you just want to be around about 20 mil. By using the DRO, zeroing it before you start drilling, you know exactly when you're around the 20 mil mark. So again, I wouldn't be without this when it comes to functions like drilling, just makes life a lot easier. Now I've got to admit, this next upgrade takes a lot of planning and design to get it installed on your lathe, but once installed, this thing is a game changer. And that is the introduction of an external motor to drive my lead screw, which is acting as a power feed. So how I've basically got this operated is down here I've got a stepper motor which connects to a V-belt which attaches onto the end of my lead screw. And when I want to do any long continuous cuts, I tend to use this quite a lot. So all you've got to do to get this to work is I've got a key switch here, which turns it on. That applies the power. I've then got another switch here, which when I turn that on, it will start the motor up and start spinning. So now whenever I want to do any long cuts, once the motor's spinning, I've got my half nut disengaged. All I have to do is engage that and the carriage begins moving down the workpiece. So I think to truly appreciate how this works, I'm going to show you a little test piece of this working in operation. So happy everything's in place and nothing's going to kill me. All I have to do is start up my stepper motor with this switch here and then engage my half nut. And literally just sit back and watch the magic happen. So if needed I can increase the speed of this but I like to leave the step motor really on its lowest speed just that way it gives the better finish. So that's the power feed upgrade on the mini lathe. By using external motor instead of your driven motor, it just takes a lot of extra load off because the motor's not having to turn the lead screw as well as the chuck when doing cuts. So, if you're having problems with your power feed on your mini lathe, I'd highly consider looking into the possibility of this upgrade. It is a really good upgrade to do, guys. Really helps out on long cuts and reduces the wear on your motor. So. Have a look into that.
So for a final little upgrade which you can do is when you buy these style mini laves, the back guard, if yours even came with one, aren't very big. And because of that, one, when I fitted my DRO, the DRO sensor was actually colliding with the back guard. So I've extended my chip guard by adding extra plates here and down here like you can see. And I've got to admit, I think that's a worthwhile upgrade and one mentioning to you. Just because it makes ease of access working around the lathe a lot better. You can easily get down here and clear out chips. And it just makes the operation when tidying up and using the lathe really good actually. So I wasn't going to mention this, but I think I will. Just because it's a little bit of fabrication work involved adding some extra plates. But it makes the overall appearance of your lathe just seem that bit much more professional and gives you more space to get around in. So I would say that is a worthwhile upgrade doing if you haven't already done it. And just to show you exactly what I've done, I had to add a spacer block down here, weld a plate on down there, and then weld another plate on here. I've used the original mounting holes that were on my mini lathe just to add that bit more room behind there. There we have it then guys, 10 upgrades you can do on your mini lathe. And some of these you could go out in the shop and do right away as long as you've got the material because they're just simple basic upgrades which make using your lathe a lot easier. So don't get me wrong, some of these projects or upgrades you're going to have to look into a little bit. You're going to have to spend some money, do some research, make sure it's suitable for you. But I think all 10 upgrades that I've mentioned in today's video are definitely worthwhile you doing when owning and using a mini lathe. So, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it today. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because we're getting ever closer to that 1,000 mark. So, every new subscriber I get really helps out the channel. Other than that, have a great week and I'll see you next week on the channel where we'll be doing some more... Mm, let's do another Let's Make a Tool video. So, see you next week, guys.